All right, gonna explain to you how the Gospel of John totally just destroys the pagan trinity and just totally annihilates it with certain verses. So, what is God? Well, or should I say, who is God? God is a the creator, of the creator of the whole world. He is the creator of heaven and earth. And what are God's attributes? Well, Deuteronomy chapter six, verse four talks about how God is one Lord. Uh, Mark chapter two, twelve, verse twenty nine. Uh, is the uh, kind of the parallel verse to Mark or Deuteron Deuteronomy 6:4, and Jesus basically repeats Deuteronomy 6:4, and 1 John 5:7 says, "For there are three that bear record in heaven: the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost, and these three are one." Now the Trinity it states that God is one being, and He is made up of three persons that all claim the title of God, but then they're not three gods; they're one God. You know, weird. Uh, all it is is just simply paganism and, and polytheism repackaged, but what is the Godhead? Well, Genesis chapter 1, verse 26 to 27 talks about how God is made in the image and likeness, or man is made in the image of likeness of God. Sorry. So, man, according to 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 23, man has a body, soul, and spirit. Well, God has a body, soul, and spirit. The body is Jesus Christ, the Father is the soul, and the Holy Ghost is the spirit. Three in one, 1 John 5, 7. And the Gospel of John just destroys the Trinity. For example, in John chapter 10, verse 30, John chapter 17, verse 11, and John chapter 17, verse 22, Jesus makes it clear that he and the Father are one. Jesus says in John 10, 30, I and my Father are one. In John chapter 17, verse 22, Jesus says, you know, talking about the Father, we are one. So that, that just annihilates the whole pagan trinity thing because God, the Father, and Jesus are the same being, the same person. In fact, the only references to the word person in the Bible is always singular. It's never a plural, persons, plural. It's always singular. Now in John chapter 15, verse 24, John chapter 12, verse 45, and John chapter 14, verse 9, Jesus talks about if you've seen him, you've seen the Father, and how he and the Father are basically, they're one being, they're one together. They're not three persons, they're not, you know, three modes, as the modalists claim, they are one being. And again, you know, uh, Hebrews chapter 1, verse 3 talks about how Jesus is the express image of God the Father's person. Paraphrasing, of course, but G God is one person. The only Again, the only references to the word person, or the only times the word person is used in reference to God, is always singular. It's never persons, plural. And of course, we see, you know, like, for example, Matthew chapter 28, verse 19, you know, baptizing them in the name, singular, name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. You know, name singular. And of course, you can compare this to Acts chapter 19, verse 5, where they're baptized in the name of Jesus. So wait a second. In Mark chapter, or not Mark, Matthew chapter 28, verse 19, you're told to baptize in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. But in, in Acts chapter 19, verse 5, where it's being put into practice, they're baptized just in the name of Jesus. How does that work? Because the fullness of the Godhead dwells in Jesus Christ, Colossians 2, 9. And also there's Genesis chapter 1, Verse 26, let, let us make man in our image. Image, plural. Or not plural, uh, singular. Messed up there. Uh, God is one image. You know, just like God is one name. The name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. And notice how he says, let us make man in our image. The Godhead is talking with itself. So there is obviously a separation and distinction in the Godhead. That's how where you get verses where Jesus is at the right hand of the Father or in Revelation where Jesus takes the book out of the Father's hand, there is obviously a separation and distinction there. Or, you know, you see where Jesus is baptized, the Father is in heaven, and the Holy Ghost comes down like a dove. Again, you see a distinction there. But they're not three persons, they are one being. And of course, you have verses like, you know, you have verses like Colossians chapter 1, verse 19. You know, uh, for, sorry, paraphrasing, but the Father says, in him should all fullness dwell. You know, or please the father, please the father that in him should all fullness dwell. Or you have Colossians chapter one verse fifteen talks about Jesus is the image of the invisible God. You have first Corinthians or second Corinthians chapter two or ch chapter four, sorry, verse four to six talks about how Christ is the, is the uh, image of God and how the glory of God is in the face of Jesus Christ. So God is one being. You know, again, you can compare that back to John fourteen nine. He that has seen me hath seen the Father. Or John chapter twelve verse forty five. He that seeth me seeth him that sent me. So they're one being within themselves. That's the Godhead. And the Gospel of John just totally destroys the pagan trinity with those couple of verses. So don't be deceived by all this Trinitarian insanity. It's it's just, that's what it is. It's, it's insanity. It's not the biblical Godhead. So don't be deceived. God bless you. Goodbye.